proud joinery like you see in this well-used step stool or a little urn is nothing new but it is somewhat in vogue in fad right now and one of the keys to making this proud kind of stuff work is bevels because a, the slightest of bevel will prevent a lot of the chip out and destruction of the wood so it will look better longer but there are a few key things that you need to know when adding a bevel to proud joinery and we'll talk about that today now there are a lot of different ways you can round over exposed joinery i mean you could just put a round over bit in your router and have at it don't do that you could also just grab sandpaper and just kind of round it over don't do that either the best results you're going to get is going to have some really nice crisp lines and angles because you're going from a flat to a round it just doesn't work in this kind of joinery aspect you really want to add that angle and the best way to get a straight angle is with a blade but you have a problem there that's spelching the problem we have is a subject we talked about last week unsupported fibers there is nothing on this side of the board there's no other wood to support a very long fiber running up so if you were to put force directly sideways going this way more than likely at a certain point that little end piece right there is going to split off and then you'll just basically destroy this entire edge of whatever joint you're looking on and that's a cosmetic spot when you're talking about exposed joinery and people will notice it so if I want to cut a very nice 45 degrees I would use something like my uh, block plane right here perfect use for a block plane. I set it up I'm going to put it at the nice 45 degree a great angle to con con connect these two flat planes and I shoot straight across and I do this a few times and guess what happened the wood started to split out at the end and there's no way I can put really put that back on and make it look good that's the spelching we're talking about and if you notice it split down below the bevel line so me coming back this way doesn't do anything it's still gonna be there and what do you know I've got spelching now on this side it's just disastrous so let's pretend we have the side of a board right here we're putting a bevel on it and it's exiting off and we would be getting that spelching up in this corner right there now what's causing that spelching is basically all the force is pushing perpendicular to the board so at a certain point that force is just enough that it just splits off right there no nope. I mean that's what it is that's because there's nothing back here supporting the wood either here here or here but what if you could sever the fibers down low maybe way down here well up until the point that that fiber is separate severed right there this piece of wood is completely supported up top so there's something holding it back from splitting off and when you angle the your blade as you're coming through all of a sudden it's supported it's supported and then it's not but by that time it's separated and you're no longer putting force on those fibers now if you have a long straight surface like this right here that you just want to add the slight bevel to yeah a block plane at a slight angle is the perfect tool but I'm going to suggest you not use it for one simple reason long straight edges like this is the perfect chance to get a lot of experience using your chisel and developing your hand skills with a chisel because this tool right here will get you out of more situations than any woodworking tool you have for example if you have proud joinery maybe proud dovetails or something like a green and green where you need to add just the slightest of camber well even if you had this separated and put the bevel on before you did it whenever you get into these interior corners there's no way you're going to get a big huge block plane into a tiny slot like that and get the angles you need to avoid spelching you're gonna have to use a chisel if you want to do it with a blade otherwise you're turning to sandpaper or rasp or something else and you're not going to get that nice crisp edge that's going to reflect light really really cool 
at certain angles. So, if you have this situation right here, or if you're doing something like this, pull out a board, cut a few bevels, and then go on to your main project. A little bit of practice goes a long way. One thing I like to do is I, want, I like to set the bottom of my bevel and the top of my bevel on a corner. I'll take the chisel. I'm going to be gripping the chisel a whole bunch and my hands are going to be all over the board to, as references and I'm going to use the different flats of the chisel to create my straight line. That's why, these, that's why we spent the time flattening these things so that we can use them this way. So I come over, hand against the board, nice and stable. I come over, I find the bottom of where I want the bevel to be and I just push up. There we go. Then I can come back and not going straight to the edge, but slightly in front of that edge, I can begin slicing my way down and every few inches, okay, I exited, so now I can come back and go a little bit deeper and I'm getting nice shavings on a curl. And what's really cool is if you get a spot where all of a sudden, hey, I got harder grain right there, I can just push off and push up. If you want, you can even put your hand on it and brace it this way and use the bottom of your bevel as your flat reference instead of the whole side back of it and come on through and kind of carve your way down but notice I am not only coming at it 45 degrees but I'm also moving the blade up so it gives me a nice slicing action and while this might not result in the smoothest cut all the way down you can come back and refine it if you want you can always go a little bit deeper, but you can't put wood back on. To even it out, over a long distance, this gives you a lot of practice for getting into those tight spots in the short different distances. Once again, come over to where I want the base is, I come up, and then I can kind of use that as a platform to get the rest of the bevel. There we go. And when you're working with stuff like this, I really want to stress, the more you can have a tool contacting the board, the more your hands are contacting the board and the tool, as long as you're not in front of the sharp edge, the better it will be. I mean, you saw me, I'm holding, I mean, my hands all over the place to control it. I'm using the flats, I'm using the bevels. That's where you gain experience, that's how you gain control, and that's how you can make yourself appear more skilled than you actually are because really how skilled is it to just put a flat down and push it through to make it even. So for today's bonus I want to talk about a Korean woodworking channel or a woodworking video but before we get there please if you like this video do me a favor like, favorite, subscribe, do all those social medias and if you want to patronize us a little bit more, visit my website, WorthEffort.com, where I write a blog. Uh, yesterday's article was, You Can't Teach on YouTube. And coming from me, I think that's a pretty bold statement. But I also have an uh, online store where I sw sell not only my own woodworking, some shop-made tools. I have some swag, such as t-shirts and some stickers that will be coming out later this week. Now, there's a Korean, I, I would assume it's like a PBS station. Uh, they have English subtitles on it, but that's irrelevant. I'm going to put a link down to it below. One of their episodes was on traditional Korean woodworking. And they went, watched this guy build an open book stand kind of multi-level table. And what was so cool about it to me is this guy used no metal mechanical fasteners and no glue. And it went together perfectly and solidly. And it's just some minor hand movements as he's working the tools that creates some of the most intricate joinery. And as you're watching him, you're realizing, hey, he's just doing 45 here, 45 there, 90 here, 90 there. It's just, it all adds up. And it's really cool watching not only the slight variations in the Asian, the Asian Pacific theme of woodworking that the Koreans brought to it with their tools and how they do stuff, but just how this guy positioned his hands as I was talking about earlier today. Once again, I can't pronounce the name of the channel, but I will put a link down below to it.